I've got a customer boat in and we're going to be upgrading the factory live well on this bass tracker to make it mo better. Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can give the factory live well into your boat a major upgrade. In the form of a variable live well timer, a 500 gallon per hour recirculation pump, and a flow right aerator pump out combo spray head. Stick around and I'll show you how I did it. My customer boat is a Bass Tracker Pro Team 165, and I'm to the tail end of a complete restoration on this boat. This thing looks phenomenal, guys. So stay tuned for future content on this boat because I did a lot of work to it, including removing the console, deleting the throttle controls, full onboard electronics, complete front deck redesign, all aluminum framing and sheet floor. So a lot's going on in this boat, so stay tuned for that. But let's get on top of this live well. And my customer's last final request was to upgrade the live well. So I'm going to show you the factory live well in this boat. I'm going to show you what I'm going to use in just a few hours to give it a major upgrade, especially for tournament fishing. I'm going to show you why I'm using it, and then I'm going to show you step-by-step step how I do it. Stick around. Now, I've had the pleasure of working on a few bass trackers in the past couple months. The ones that I've worked on are all the same. It's just got your live well tub. There is a pump in the back underneath that rat. You turn the switch on and um, it fills up the live well, comes through this sprayer head, fills it up. You've got a drain and it drains down and out the side of the boat. And that's it, guys. There is no recirculation. There is no live well timer. None of that. It just fills it up. And that's that's that. So what my guy does is he takes one of them uh, battery powered bubble boxes or aerates the water, sticks it in here on tournament days, creates bubbles, keeps his fish alive for the day. But since we're doing all this work, we want to do better than that. So let me show you what I'm going to use to give this live well a good upgrade. All of these parts that I'm using in this retrofit project, I've actually used in the past, so I know that they work. I've either used them on my personal boat builds or other customer projects, so we're sticking with what works. I'm going to leave the links to all these parts down in the video description, so if you're interested in using any of this stuff on your personal boat project, you'll know exactly what I used in this project. As I show you each individual item, I'm also going to explain to you how I'm going to use it and what the end goal is for this upgrade. So first and foremost, we've got a Atwood Recirc Live Well Kit. Now what this comes with is a 500 gallon per hour pump. It's a cartridge pump with a stainless screen. It's got a sprayer head on it. Um, and it also has a little bit of hose and some, some plumbing parts. Now what, what I'm basically going to do with this is this is going to be the second pump um, in this boat. You've got the first pu pump under the rat that fills the Live Well up. Now this screen and this pump is probably going to get mounted down in here somewhere um, because I have access in the back of the boat. And then this, when it's activated, it will suck the water through the pump and then spray it back out into the water, creating aeration. And of course, this pump will be on a live well timer. It's a variable live well timer, and I'll get to this in a second. So basically, that's what you got to have to make this whole thing work is one of these pumps or the pump kit. I like the kit because it comes with the screen and it comes with a little bit of hose and some clamps. And um, I'm probably not going to use the sprayer head because I'm going to be upgrading that to this over here. And what this is over here is a flow right pump out aerator combo. And this really is what makes the magic happen in this setup, guys. Um, this thing is so cool. I used it in my personal boat and I, I, I love this product. Um, what it does is it replaces that sprayer head. It's an upgrade. Um, so basically this pump will hook to one of these fittings and it's going to spray water back into the live well. The second fitting is going to attach to a through hole fitting and it's going to allow you to when you want to empty the live well, you either push or pull this in and it opens and closes these. And then that secondary one will open up 
and it will pump the water out. Um, long story short, they've got a little drawing on the back right there that kind of shows you what it does. And you'll see at the end of the video because I'll do a demonstration of this in, in operation. But uh, really, really cool. So we're going to use this and that doubles up as your recirc to your sprayer head and your pump out to pump the water out of the live well. Next, I've got this bilge pump plumbing kit, and this is essentially five foot of hose with a through hole fitting, and that's just for your live well pump out. I'm gonna have some extra parts when this is all said and done because this gives you a through hole fitting, but it doesn't have any of the plumbing, so I bought the plumbing that also comes with a through hole fitting. And then quick note, I buy this whole kit because you get all of these parts for about the same price as if you were to just buy the pump and the screen separate. So, so I just buy the kit and I have some stuff left over and it's the same price. So that's why I do that. Um, let's talk about this live well timer. So this is essentially the switch that's going to activate this pump. So instead of it being on like a gang switch, it'll actually be on this, but it doubles as a timer to give this live well um, a variable cycles. So you could run it straight on which will just continuously recirculate the water and keep this pump running nonstop. You can run one minute on, one minute off because it's a time device. One minute on, three minutes off. One minute on, seven minutes off. So it's all in the individual's preference of how much he wants to aerate his water, what the water temps are, how hot it is outside, all of that stuff, and then battery conservation all play into this. So it's just really awesome. And of course, it's got the straight off but uh, that's how we're gonna use this. And we're gonna mount this over here on this side panel of the boat. And then this gets wired in, it gets fused with everything else. And then it get, goes to your negative side as well. And uh, I'll show you when we get to this, how I do that. Hopefully that made sense to you guys. If not, keep watching. It'll make sense as we do the install with all the parts I'm using and why we're using it. Obviously, we want to give this boat a real bass boat setup with timed aeration for my customers' tournament fishing. Let's get this party started. The first thing I need to determine with all this mess is the logistics of where exactly I'm going to mount the pump, the through hole fitting. Um, we already know the live oil timer is going to go here. So obviously wiring needs to be routed to that location. So just logistically figuring out where all this stuff's going to go. I had originally intended for this pump to mount up and under here and right there. Now the problem with that is if I mount it in there, it's so tight I could just get it in and you're not going to be able to, my customer's not going to be able to change this cartridge if he needs to or access it. Um, it's just going to be way too tight. So I've decided not to put it in that location, which really only leaves me one other location, and that's on the back side of the live well, which I'm thinking we're going to go to the, to the left side of the live well, up and under, and back over here somewhere. So I think we're going to put the pump down at the bottom, put the flow right um, spray valve combo uh, directly above it. There's a factory wiring tube that goes through this part of the deck. So it'll go through that. Then it'll pop out here and we'll be able to wire it into the live wall timer, fuse it and uh, negative terminal there. No issues. Now the through hole fitting is a little bit different. And uh, originally what I had planned was obviously to just direct it that way and come out the side of the boat. The problem there is there's foam in here. I can't get in there. I can't cut this and get through and route everything and get behind here to actually attach that fitting. So that's kind of a problem, which leads me to go out the back of the boat. So what I've done is I've taken my tape and I measured out, as you can see there marked in marker, five inches by nine inches, just an access, because this is about an inch in to that tub, this cover. You got an inch of a void in there, so I need to get through this and have an open area to be able to mount this pump and mount that flow right at the top. So um, we're about to get to cutting, guys. Got this spider. Look at that thing, man. That looks bad. A hey, got this on the four and a half um, angle grinder, and we're just going to get to cutting. Yep, that was sketchy. That was definitely sketchy. I had to take off the guard on my grinder, which I really never liked to do because I couldn't get in there and get the right angle to cut that hole. But I'll tell you what, guys, these spider cutoff wheels that I got, I believe I got these at Lowe's, man. That thing was sweet. It cut really, really well. Um, there's the hole. Cut it out. 
hit it with a grinder, a little harder than I thought it would be. I was originally gonna use a hole saw and hole out the top and then on the bottom, but I was afraid this bit would go through and penetrate and puncture that live well. So I went this route, ended up having a little bit more clearance than I thought I would, but uh, still always scary when you're cutting that close to something you don't wanna cut through. Getting ready to mount the pump, going over the instructions, and uh, you know, you've gotta run a screen on this, at least you should. And the problem with the screen is you can't get all the way to the bottom with the diameter of the hole and you can see you've got about a half an inch material okay so you want to get down as tight as you can get okay but what i'm going to do is i'm going to mount it on the flat so i'm going to go right about there i'm going to mark my hole i'm going to drill it through now i was going over the instructions i want to share this because i kind of forgot about this if you got less than eight inches of water then you want to offset where your aerator sprayer sprays back in because what will happen is if you go directly above it it'll spray down into it and it'll create cavitation in the pump. It'll suck in air and it'll give you some problems. So I'm actually going to mount the sprayer over here instead of directly above it because I think he's going to run right at eight inches, but I don't want to assume because you know what they say about assuming it makes an ass out of you and me. So I'm not going to make an ass out of anybody. I'm going to offset it. And that's fine because I've got some room under here actually to mount that spray head. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get ready and drill my hole. What I've done is get my screen where I want it. And then I mark the top of it with tape. As you can see, you probably can't see, but there is a little tiny mark, all right, right about there. And that's an inch and an eighth. What I did was measure from the outside of this to dead center, and it's an inch and an eighth. So now that signifies where I need to drill my hole. And luckily enough, I've got a one inch drill bit and my drill can just barely fit inside of here. So I'm gonna drill the hole from the inside out and uh, hopefully it pops out right about where I cut that uh, access. All right, got it uh, in there and mocked up. And uh, that one inch hole is like perfect, guys. Super tight fitment. So if you ever mount one of these, one inch is perfect for these. I'm going to go ahead and focus my attention on the flow right spray head. We're going to put that in. And so it's going to go right about in here, guys. Um, I've got to break this thing down to actually fit it through, but it's going to be the same size hole. It's going to be a one inch and you're going to need one of these on the back and on the front. So I measured on the back side to check my clearance and I figured out I need to be anywhere within five inches or less to center of this sprayer to where this one goes. So when this mounts right about here, you got to account for your flange. So I'm going to mount it right about here. And um, that's like at four and a half inches from this to there. So we're gonna be good with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill the hole and we're gonna mount her up. So this is how the Flowrite pump out aerator combo actually goes back together when you install it. Um, you've got the back with the outlets, you've got a mounting nut, you've got a mounting nut, obviously you've got your threading in the middle. Then you've got the sprayer head that goes on last and uh, you hand tighten that part on. These two you tighten with uh, marine sealant in between them and they go through the hole. I'm going to break this thing back down and uh, mock it up and then see how our plumbing's going to route and then we can figure out how we're going to do our final installation. All right, everything is rough mocked. And just a note, this you can turn this to actually dictate the flow of water in the live well. So you can go this way with it. You can go this way with it. So just a preference. And, um, and then obviously you pull out and you can push in and that activates the valves on the back. So just rough mocked. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn, turn it like that and then turn that like that to where it's a straight run and then on the back side my outlet will go across and then up and then through hole back here i think that's how i'm gonna do it i'm testing the pump before i permanently mount it because i'm gonna run some 3m 5200 fast cure sealant around this pump on both sides permanently mount it last thing you want to do is get everything wired up and there would be some manufacturer's issue with this pump and um, you didn't test it beforehand. So as you can see, this thing fires up. So we're gonna go ahead and permanently mount it.
Alrighty, that turned out very nicely. It's mounted, it's tight. Tighten everything hand tight, come back, and then use a wrench to tighten that nut on the back. They recommend like a half or three quarters of a turn. And uh, just gonna let that, that's the fast cure, gonna let that cure up. Gonna go ahead and take some of it, put it on this side of this, and then on the other side of this nut, and then attach everything on that. We'll skip that, and then we'll get back to the plumbing. All gravy, baby. You can see that is mounted and tight and secure. There you go. So next up, we gotta connect the dots. And before we do that, this little part that came with that live oil kit, this fitting, that's gonna go on there. And then we're gonna run a hose from there to there with some, uh, with some clamps. And then we could run our um, exit for our through hole and then wire that up to our live oil timer. Now, from here, to here, all right, the recirc, I'm gonna use this smooth hose, okay? This'll make sure the water's running through efficiently and uh, it's not a very long run. As you can see, this was included with a live oil kit. Now on the back side for the pump out, I'm actually gonna use um, this hose that came with the bilge plumbing kit. All right, now as you can see, I got that installed. It goes up to that I'm using these plastic quick clips that they include. Now, what these do is you, you can easily slip these over the line after you install and then they just snap together. Now, you're only going to get them so far by hand. And what I've come to learn is if you take, you could get them in there. Once you get it on and hand tight, as you can see, you could tighten them tighter with this like so. So just a quick tip. Just open up the bilge pump plumbing kit and what you get in the kit is a through hole fitting, couple clamps, five foot of three quarter inch plastic hose. And what I envision doing is drilling a hole right here for the through hole fitting. And then the hose will attach, go through, drill a hole here. The hose will go down through this rear tray, run along this um, underneath this lip on this wall to the corner and over and attach to the flow right. So I guess now we need to go ahead and drill a hole. All right, that's mounted. I actually had to drop it down a little bit to clear this lip to ensure that I could tighten it against the flat surface. Use that 3M sealant around the outside of it. What I did was I used, I actually use this. This is for my angle grinder. This is a uh, the tool that I use to change out um, my wheels. And uh, I just stick this in there like that. All right, you'll see that they've got a little slot in there. And then, and then on the other side, Use that to just tighten everything up. All right, got that tightened up with my little chub. And um, now I've got the hose routed. We're just gonna attach it up and underneath along the bottom of this lip and around to the corner and into the valve. And what I've done is I've used these in the past, but to get them up and tight, I've actually taken my Milwaukee tool with a cutoff wheel and I've actually just kind of cut off one of these. So, so this can actually go on this like so, and then go up tight as I can get it. And then I can just mount it in place. Let me show you what I did here. Through hole fitting is down then it attaches got that tight went ahead and zip tied it so these lines run parallel and then as you can see down and around up and back out super happy with it and now, of course, I just need to route this wire, wire it around to the live oil timer, and then we'll be done. And uh, for mounting these, since I didn't show that, all I'm doing is holding them in place and uh, then using my impact and just using some self-tapping stainless screws to uh, just punch through 
and attach. I get a whole pack of these on Amazon for like 10 bucks for I think a hundred of them. So, all right, got my wire routed up and around and zip tied nice and tight and tidy and uh, went ahead and put some quick connects on the end of these positive negatives coming off this um, pump. I promise I'm not trying to make this like an Amazon app, but I get all these from Amazon as well. I get all my stuff from Amazon and Tiny Boat Nation, guys. Um, TinyBoatNation.net, which is where I get my wire from that I'm about to route. As you can see, I've got this routed through. It goes through the tube, under the deck, and it pops out back in this corner, routed under. I'm gonna tab it in to that pump. And uh, this is the wire I use, guys. TinyBoatNation.net, anchor, marine grade, uh, duplex, 14 gauge, 250 foot. I use 14 gauge for almost all accessories in my boat to alleviate any confusion. Um, you can run higher on some stuff, a few things you need lower, but not many. So this is what I run for just about everything that's in this boat. Finally, cousins, to the live well timer, and then we are done with this project. This is a Leisure Electronics variable live well timer. This is the same one I run in my personal boat. It's a good live well timer. I'm going to go ahead and wire this bad boy up, and then I'll show you the end result of the wiring. And that, my friends, is the sound of success. Let me show you what I did here and what is going on as far as the wiring diagram. Very simple, guys. This white duplex is a positive and negative, and it is coming from that pump in the back. Okay, so your negative coming from the pump is the yellow, and the red is the positive coming from the pump. So the positive goes to this top prong. All right, that's your accessory. The negative goes to the bottom prong. That is your ground. Now, I chose to double up in run the negative from the pump to the negative on this timer and then run that back and down and tie into my negative terminal. The other way is to just directly run this negative from the pump straight to the negative on the terminal, but I'd also have to run a negative from here down and ground this as well because this needs to be grounded also. So I just chose to go two to one and then pop back out and run it down so it's all grounded. And then this middle prong, that's just uh, your out coming back, um, your positive coming out of the switch, back down and around, and it comes out here and it ties in and it's got a 10 amp fuse. So that's your fused positive. And then of course, this bigger cable is coming from your battery. So if you're not running a fuse box, this is a good time to upgrade and get you a fuse box. You could get one of these for like 25 bucks. It's good to have, especially if you're doing more accessories in your boat. And, and, and with this one, it actually lights up if any of these fuses pop. If you don't run a fuse box, then instead of a fuse box, you just would have an inline fuse in between this and your battery. Now I'm to the stage to where I'm going to go ahead and put this panel back in, get everything nice and tight and tidy. This boat is done with wiring. This was the last thing I had to do. So I'm going to get everything back in as a finished product. And then we're going to fill this live well up, get this boat outside. I'm going to give you a walkthrough with you, show you how it turned out, how it operates. One final note, guys, as I'm mounting this live well timer on this panel, as you can see, it comes with a decal and you're supposed to stick this decal over. It goes through and it's supposed to go around and that tells you your settings. Well, obviously this isn't going to stick very well to carpet. So, you know, a lot of times you'll have aluminum or some sort of a panel that this will go through. Well, we don't have that. So I took a piece of one inch flat aluminum, drilled me a hole in the center. That's going to overlap that like so. And then I've got two holes for some screws and I'm just going to stick this decal on it. I might even get fancy with it and wrap it in some carbon fiber vinyl, but that's kind of my solution to be able to mount that decal.
All right, guys, I got it outside and filled up with water. It's super, super simple. I'm going to show you how this thing actually works. You've got different cycles on your timer. Your first cycle is just straight run. You can kind of hear how that is uh, turned on and water is circulating. Now, if you go to your setting, that's the one, it's going to stay off for the first minute. And then after a minute, it's going to turn on and run for a minute. And then it'll turn off for a minute and so on and so forth. Same thing with the three. That's three minutes off, one minute on, and then seven minutes off, one minute on. So let's uh, turn it to straight run for me to demonstrate. You can even turn this around like that if you wanted to. You can go this way with it. You know, whatever you want to do. And uh, pretty much all there is to it is when you uh, pull this out, this is my favorite part of that setup. It switches the valve on the back side, and instead of recirculating, it starts pumping it out. Push it in, opens the valve back up, and uh, it's really, really neat. I hope my customer gets a lot of use out of this live well. I have one in my boat, very similar setup, and it's truly awesome. So uh, I hope that you guys can take something away from this video and you've enjoyed watching the process of uh, this live well upgrade. Thanks again, guys. Stick around for future content. We've got more of these boat builds coming up that I'm super excited to share with you. See you on the next one.